Hey, it was 10 days ago that I was working with these cucumber plants. I have the Piccolino variety, Parthenocarpic, no need for bees. And these two uh, plants are growing in six gallons under 100 watts. And what I was explaining was, as the vines grow out, if they are typically growing out maybe six to eight feet, you can prune the tips off of those and keep those compact to fit underneath a two by two or three by three space. Now, what I'd like to talk about today was that last time I showed you a vine and I clipped off about eight inches of the vine from the end. And that is what's considered to be like the growth tip took off the uh, little cucumbers and stuck that into an arrow garden. Now, when you clip off the ends of those vines, you could do things like use a cloning collar, that's neoprene, and these hold up a lot better than pool noodles, and they're already pre-split, they go right around the stem. And the other way that I do it is with arrow gardens, this is an air garden basket, and inside of it is a sponge. And what I'll do is I'll slice right down the side of that and lay the uh, cucumber stem into it. And then I drop that into an air garden and allow it to root out where I could replant it. It becomes a new plant. And as a matter of fact, let's take a look at the cutting that I took from 10 days ago. And here it is. These uh, air garden sprouts only have about uh, 10 watts of LED light. And there's the cap where I refill the nutrient water. In the back of these is a little pump that circulates the water around. And the light is tuned for small plants and seedlings. And they work great for cloning as well. Now. This uh, cucumber cutting, if you notice, there's a lettuce plant in the back, and it just so happened I had other things in this side. That's why I stuck it here. That, and it's short term because I typically like to root these and get them planted into bigger containers. They're quick growers. Now, this one is already starting to put cucumbers on it. These uh, parthenocarpic varieties grow. They're kind of like rabbits, you know, you can't just have one rabbit, you, you end up with like 50, 100 of them because they're so prolific. Same thing with this variety of cucumber. I'll pull the light up a little bit and give us some more room to, to pull this out. Now you can see the lettuce roots are just massive and beautiful looking. And the cucumber roots are just starting to poke out, so since they're not quite that large, and I, I don't want to see them get too large like the lettuce because it makes it a little bit more tough to get these out. But I'll grab hold, pull that up, let some of that water come off, and show you the uh, amount of roots that are coming out at the moment. So I'll probably... Uh, Oh, you want to see the cucumbers too? There they are. Okay. So what I'm going to end up doing is because I want more roots on this before it starts going in production, I'm going to uh, take off those baby cucumbers and let the plant focus more of its uh, energy on the uh, leaves and less on fruit production. It's crazy. Like I said, how many cucumbers are on this? Okay, so we'll take off those. We'll go ahead and stick that back in there. And just for fun, I've got a time-lapse video that I'll show to you right now on this plant from the time I stuck it in over the past 10 days, just some of the highlights so you can watch the uh, responsiveness of that vine cutting under this system.
If you'd like to go through what I did to get that, I'll just uh, quickly show you by taking another cutting. So let's take the uh, grow sponge out. It's just a little uh, pocket knife that I'm using right now. And so I'm going to uh, put this on the countertop and I'm going to uh, hold it up by the top because when I cut through it, I don't want a chance cutting my fingers. So you start by just pressing down. This sponge material is very easy to get through. It's a little gummy. And I like to be able to cut through it enough to fold it open. Let's see where we're at right now. So there's the, uh, there's the line. And if we take our fingers and just kind of roll back that material, it looks like that. While I've been here uh, looking for a uh, vine to cut, let's go ahead and uh, take some of the cucumbers off because uh, they're weighing down on the vines and making those a little bit uh, heavier and so we'll take that off and let's see what else is in here right now uh these cucumbers are so doggone prolific that if you're just growing for oh my gosh uh personal use it's sometimes hard to keep up with them i have been trying to let me show you a couple different sizes Try not to let them get that large. I actually prefer them about that size. Put those side by side. About that size because uh, they're better for me if I want to just eat them skin and all and maybe slice them in half and dip those into a uh, veggie dip. See, that's one of the things about growing in a small space is you do have a little bit more vegetation. Oh, here's another one. A uh, little bit more vegetation and another one. Well, I'm not going to be short on cucumbers, that's for certain. I think we're ready to start looking around the plant for a vine to cut. Now, when I go to uh, cut vines, my preference is to find a vine that has leaves that are fairly close together and look healthy. There's no uh, noticeable uh, nutrient issues with the leaves. And as much as I hate to lose cucumbers, what I'm going to do is I'll come in right above those larger ones down at the bottom there, snip that, and we'll just lean in and show you. See, there's a flower on there too. Uh, what I'll do is I'm going to snip off the cucumbers without cutting the leaves. Four cucumbers on just this. No, oh, I'm sorry. Five. I think I'm going to have to pinch that one off because it's so tight up against the uh, end there. Six. And, oh, there's another one right there. Seven. These little tendrils. Let me show you that wispy thing right there. Those aren't necessary. They just allow the plant to cling on to things, and we don't need those for a cutting. Now, on this cutting, see the larger leaf? down here in the bottom, that's going to be down where we'll end up sticking this into the water. So let's snip it off. And there you go. That is all you need off the end of the vine. So on the sponge, of course, goes without saying the larger end goes upwards. And we're just going to uh, open that up and lay the vine inside of it. Kind of like putting a, a hot dog in a bun for a hot dog sandwich, if you have ever done that. 
like that. And once we have it uh, inside, all we have to do is just push it down, avoid hitting the base of that. There's a couple different things you could do. One is you can run the stem outside of the basket. And the other is you can actually just uh, pull the stem upwards so that there's not as much sticking out. And we'll just stick that down all the way into the bottom like that. Drop that into one of these air garden sprouts that I've already got filled up with water. And I like to turn the cutting so that I could lay it out across the deck of that air garden sprout and have most of it uh, directly underneath the light. But that should be all set to go. There's nothing you really need to do with it. Uh, probably come back in about uh, 10 to 15 days and find that it's all rooted out and it's ready to pull out and put into a larger system. And it's just that simple.